Hi, this is Maggie from Crafts the Charm. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm so glad you're here. I really wanted to make a boho table runner for the winter, and I thought if I could incorporate some recycled materials into the project, all the better. So I'm going to be using these plastic shopping bags, and I'm not going to do anything special with them. I'm just going to basically roll them up into a sort of a cord, and then I'm going to be wrapping yarn and twine around them and making basically circles. So I'm going to be using this cream colored yarn and this twine, which are both from the Dollar Tree, the plastic shopping bags to wrap around. And then it's also very helpful if you have a little tool like this, which is just a paper clip that's been straightened out with a little hook at one end. And also a yarn needle is also helpful. Now the beginning of this sort of weaving is probably the most difficult. And what we're going to do is take the plastic bag and just sort of flatten it out, roll it up, and then we're going to start wrapping our yarn around the end. So I'm going to measure out some yarn and I'm going to say it's about, oh, I don't know, six to eight feet of yarn. And I'm going to wrap it double. So I've got two lengths of the yarn that are the same length, and I'm just going to begin by wrapping around the end of the plastic shopping bag. So lay the yarn along the end and then start wrapping over the yarn. You don't have to get exactly to the end of the shopping bag. In fact, I recommend you don't um, leave a little bit of the end poking out because we'll cover that over in a moment. Now, once you get enough wrapped that you can bend it in half and maybe long enough, maybe about an inch, so that there's going to be a little hole in this, so a little loop, then bend it over. And now you're going to wrap over both sides a little bit. So this is where we'll cover up that initial bit that we left out in the open. And then you're just going to continue wrapping. Now notice that I am wrapping away from myself. So continue wrapping and you're going to wrap until you can bend what you've wrapped around that loop that you made so that where your wrapping is aligns with that hole in the loop. So now you're going to pull the yarn through the loop and that's how we hold this coil together. So pull the yarn up, use your little hook to go up through the hoop and pull the yarn down through it and come back up in between your loop and where you've been wrapping and then just continue wrapping. Now pick a number, I picked 12, and you're going to wrap 12 times and then you're going to do that again. Press this together and put your little hook up through the middle, grab your yarn, pull it down through and then bring it back up in between the two and then continue wrapping. Now occasionally when you get to your number um, you may be in a spot where you can't pull through and that's okay. Just do a few more or a few fewer. As you continue along making coils you're not going to be going through that loop in the middle anymore. You're going to be connecting the current coil to the last coil. Now eventually you're going to run out of yarn. So at this point, you can either cut two more strands of yarn to keep going, or you can switch to twine. I'm using yarn and twine. Of course, you can use any materials that you like. So I cut about the same length of twine. I also doubled up the twine. And then what you're going to do is lay the yarn along the plastic bag and lay the twine along the plastic bag and begin wrapping. And you're going to wrap over both the yarn and the twine as you wrap over the plastic bag and cover them up and just keep going. And then of course, eventually you're going to run out of plastic bag. So you'll notice that this is a little lumpy. With the plastic bags, 
they're a little bit variable in their width, so I'm not getting perfectly sized coils. But the handles of the bags really are quite thin. So what I ended up doing when I was almost out of plastic bag is taking the next plastic bag, sort of trying to roll it up into a, a nice long rope, and then folding over the handles to give me sort of a double width where the handles are, and then putting them inside what's left of the plastic bag on my weaving and wrapping that around tightly. So this is the only tricky part. You have to hold that plastic bag together as you're wrapping around it, otherwise your new plastic bag will slip out. Now, eventually you're going to have the size of disc that you want. So I have reached that point here with this one. And what I'm doing is I am cutting off the end of the plastic bag here. And the reason for that is because I'm about to run out of twine and I don't want to start new twine. So I'm, I'm just going to finish it here. And what I'm going to do is once I'm close to the end is wrap around both the current coil and the coil below together all the way to the end. So for I don't know, half an inch to an inch, you're going to wrap around both. And once that is completely covered, the easiest way to finish this is to take a yarn needle and put it through what you just wrapped, the, the wrapping that goes around both coils, and then cut it off on the end. Now you'll notice that this is quite random. You can make patterns when you're weaving this way. In fact, I made a little basket with a pattern once, and I'll include a link to that video here. But because I'm using the plastic bags and the coils aren't going to be very even anyway, I thought that a more random look would look better for this project. Now I'm going to make three of those, and two of them are going to be fairly large. One of them is going to be a little bit smaller and two of them start with white in the middle and one of them starts with the twine in the middle. So I am just trying for a different look for each of them, but roughly the same. But I want to have some other circles to go around them for a little contrast. So what I have here is a piece of rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to form this into a coil and I'm just going to sew it together with thread. Now before I coil it though, I am going to whip the ends with twine. So these usually come with some tape around the ends, and when I use rope I usually tape up the ends just to hold it together uh, when I'm done with it. So all of my pieces of rope have tape on the ends, I'm just going to cut the tape off, and then just take your twine, make a small loop and hold it along the edge of the rope with the loop towards the longer part of the rope, and the two ends pointing off the end of the rope, and then wrap around the rope with one of those pieces back towards the loop. I use the whole ball of twine there and then I cut the twine once I reach the loop, put the twine up through the loop and then pull the other end. So this pulls the loop under the wrapping and then trim the ends off. So I did that for both ends of the rope. And then I simply coiled the rope up and stitched it together maybe every half inch with a similar colored thread. Now I did that for a new piece of rope, and then I have all of these um, just odds and ends of rope, so I did that for some of these as well. So some of them I made small circles, and I just, again, I whipped the ends and then coiled them up and sewed them with thread. For two of them, I joined them together, so I used the same method, the whipping method, but I used a little piece of masking tape to hold them together while I whipped around that joining of the two pieces of rope, and then I coiled and sewed the whole thing.
Now for the final component of this table runner, I'd like to include some beads. And I have these beads that I got at the Dollar Tree. They're very white. I have the tags here from the pieces and it says special moments, memories, collection, decor, but you can use any beads, of course. These are just a little too white for my piece because I used that cream colored yarn. It's really not a bright white. So I'm going to use Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in sheepskin and just give these beads a coat of paint. Because they're white, I think one coat of paint will do it. Even if a little bit of the white shows through, that's not a big deal. So I'm just painting them on these bamboo skewers so I can paint them all the way around in one sitting. Now that I have all of my circles made and all of my beads painted, I'm just laying them all out in a sort of random pattern again because the plastic bags didn't give me even cords. I'm really not trying to be symmetrical with any of this. I'm trying to go for a sort of organic look. And my idea here is sort of like the circles are rocks and the beads are water. So I'm just going to sort of flow those beads around some of the circles and between them. And once I was happy with where the beads were, I threaded them back onto the twine that they were originally on. And I also had to use some additional pieces of twine that I have because I have them in separate places around my circles. And it's easier to thread these onto twine if you can stiffen the edge of the twine. So I used just a little bit of white glue to stiffen the ends of the twine. And then I threaded the beads through. Now to attach this all together, I'm going to use leftover bits of twine from this process and from other projects that I've done. And I'm going to use the yarn needle and just go up through one of my coils and down through another one a couple of times to connect them together at the edges. So anywhere that these connect, or even if they connect but with beads between them, I'm just going to have a, a few pieces of twine connecting them together. And to start, I'm just connecting them all together and leaving the twine sticking up so I can see where I've done it. And once I have all of that twine in place, what I'm going to do is use my yarn needle again and just put the ends back through so that the ends are now poking out on the bottom, flip it over and tie a square knot that's right over left, left over right, and then use my yarn needle again and just slide that yarn into the coils if I can or just under where I wrapped the coils together and then trim it off. And I'm just going to do that for all the places where I connected all of the coils. For the beads, I'm connecting them every three beads to whatever piece they're up against. So just tying them with a piece of twine every three beads and tying a square knot underneath and trimming that square knot. And here's the final piece. I'm really happy with it, especially here on this little console table that I have. Please tell me what you think in the comments. I think this is an easy project, and I love the recycling idea. What do you think? If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.